WebP is an amazing image format that's for the modern web, but it is still kind of hard to work with. So let's write up a script that will help us to convert WebP into something that's a little bit more manageable from our end, like a JPEG or a PNG. And I want to give a shout out to AJ Joseph, who commented on one of my other videos. So this is that response for you. I'm here on GitHub. Go ahead and grab this by clicking the copy right there. And we're just going to copy this right into our Visual Studio Code editor so that we can continue to build on this script. This is from my previous video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll show that in the card. Awesome. So I want to show you my setup just really quickly here. I've got some images that I've put in this little source file here. I've been playing around with a lot of these. Now I do have a project folder for this and you'll also notice that I have a virtual environment. So again, if you don't know what that is, go ahead and check out this card. The script itself is just convert dash w or webp uh, dot py because we'll be working in Python, of course. And I've got that open up here. So I'm going to close the folder. And then the last thing is I, I have activated my virtual environment. So that is something to note. Uh, the only thing in there that you're going to need is pillow. So that's the only requirement, pip install, capital P, pillow, and you'll be good to go. So now we are ready to get coding. Let's create a brand new function because so far in this script, we just have a convert a JPEG or a PNG to WebP. And then we have this convert all that will take care of any photos that it finds in this images folder. And of course we can add a function now to convert something from WebP to JPEG or PNG. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I'll just put it up top here just to be nice and clean. We're going to start out by defining a, our new uh, function and I'm going to say convert from WebP to kind of describe what this is doing. We're going to take file name just kind of like we did uh, below. We'll also want a path and we can go ahead and set an, uh, a default like we have before. And then there's going to be one more parameter to use on this function. I'm going to call it new extension. And that's because we're not going to be totally sure which format best fits a WebP because WebP could be either a JPEG or a PNG. It supports transparency and it, it works well with, with both of those types of files. So there's not a great way, at least to my knowledge, that we can say, hey, figure out <laughs> which one it should be. So I'm going to have the user pass in that desired extension. So that's why it's going to be kind of a one-off deal where we're not going to batch export a bunch of WebP images into JPEG or PNG. It's just going to be a, a single transformation. So really fast, I do want to make kind of a little disclaimer here. I haven't found the greatest experience converting it from a WebP original file to a JPEG or a PNG. So my personal take on this is that you really shouldn't use this kind of a script to do something in, in a production setting where we're taking WebP original source files and converting them back into a JPEG or a PNG that will be used you know, for either design files or something that will be iterative. Whenever you save an image into a new format or you resave it, resave it, it actually degrades the quality every time you do that. So basically what it comes down to is, is the use case really. And of course you'll be able to quality control a little bit better if you're doing this on an individual basis. But otherwise this should be a great little script for you to have in your toolkit in case you need it for whatever use case comes up. So let's keep on going here. We're going to want to, um, again, discover what the name is without the extension. So I'm going to call it F name just to be consistent with the rest of our script here. We're going to split out based on the period and we're going to choose that first group because again, we just want the file name, not the dot webp in this example. Uh, so then we are also going to create an image and of course this is directly coming from the pillow library So we're, we're actually calling this image here. That's why it's a capital I We're gonna have it open up the path plus the file name So we're what we're doing here is I'm saying hey, we have a file name including the webp extension and we also have the path so that it knows where to find it. So we're, we're putting all of those together so that it can open this image for us. And then here's where we're going to put in our logic to make the conversion. If 
our new extension, so if what we want is for it to be a PNG, and again, that's, that's what we've passed up here in the parameters. So if the image that I'm working with is a WebP image, but I can see that it should be a PNG, I'm gonna send it this parameter here saying it should be a PNG. And so if it is uh, the PNG that I want it to be converted into, then we're gonna just go image.save. And then we can just do this little uh, path plus F name, which is the file name without the extension. And then we're going to add uh, .png at the end of it. And then um, the there's one final parameter in the save function. Let's go ahead and tell it what type it should be actually now, because this is just uh, basically the, the label, but this tells Pillow what file type it actually should be saving it as. Now, you definitely don't have to do this. I'm gonna just add a little converted here as a little tag at the very end of the name just so that I can tell which ones are being converted by the script and which ones are the original files. Feel free to to add it or, or to do something else to help you recognize when things have been converted. Um, maybe that's even saving it in a different path. I'm just going to go forward now and let's just finish up the logic for if it's a JPEG that we want. So if our new extension says JPEG, then we're going to do image.save. And again, we're gonna do that path plus the, f the file name without the extension. And then again, you don't have to add this little tag at the end of the name, but I'm gonna do that just for my, my sake. And then comma in quotes, JPEG. This does need to be all caps, I believe. Um, that, that may cause you an error if that's not the case. And it also uh, should have the E in there. And really that's just about all we need. So what I'm gonna do down here is uh, in this main, um, I'm gonna comment this out. This was from the, our previous script. So I want it to just worry about converting a WebP into the JPEG or the PNG. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that now. Tell it to um, convert from WebP and I'm gonna pass it in a file name. And it is at this path here. And uh, I'm gonna copy that, but this one actually should be a JPEG. So I'm going to add a new extension is equal to JPEG. Now remember, we did set a, a default here. So up here where we say new extension equals PNG, that means I'm saying, hey, if, if we forget the new extension, just make it a, a PNG. And that's why I don't have it listed here in the parameters. But on this one, since I do want it to specifically be a JPEG, I've, I've added it there. If I really wanted to be explicit and to be clear in my code, then I can totally add the new extension equals PNG just so that I can be clear in, you know, five months from now when I look at this and it seems like a uh, total gibberish. <laughs> so I'm going to save that and I'm going to open up the terminal uh, right before I run this. These are the two images that I want to get out of WebP and into JPEG and PNG. So this one has transparency. Um, it has a transparent background. And this one is just my headshot. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Python, convert, WebP. And look at that. We now have some new files in here. So we have our original WebP, but we can see now we have a JPEG that is ready for us to look at. And the cool thing is if I, um, I'm kind of switching back and forth between these two. The quality looks about the same, which is really, really nice. And you can also see the size has increased just a little bit because WebP is usually a little bit more optimized. And so you do see that it's 20 KB with, uh, with the WebP. And then if I move it up to JPEG, we're seeing about 22 kilobytes for, for our file size. And that's to be expected. Now, what about our PNG uh, conversion here. We had this background that was transparent. Well, guess what? The WebP conversion into PNG preserved that transparency, which is super nice. I didn't have to add any extra parameters or anything, which is also really nice. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that it came from WebP. 
sometimes you will have to really specify that you want transparency if you're doing other kinds of conversions with, with Pillow. But I do think that since WebP already had the, the transparency built into it, I think that's why it's it's preserved here. Uh, so, so that's really nice. And that's something you'll want to check. And if we go back and forth, we can see, again, the file size does increase and that is expected. Um, WebP is going to be a lot smaller file size uh, for the vast majority of cases. If image formats give you any kind of trouble, go ahead and check out this video over here. It's my ultimate guide to optimizing images for the web. It will go over what a JPEG is best suited for, what a PNG is best suited for, and it'll go through those things to help clear up some of that confusion for you.